Hello, everybody. Welcome to my first Facebook Live video for My Bod Wellness. I'm Denise Posnack Gaffney, and I'm the founder of My Bod Wellness. We are an online Pilates and yoga coaching service. We do live training through Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, primarily through Zoom video conferencing. So one of the things I wanted to do this month, the month of March, um, is to just really get in depth um, about my philosophy surrounding core. So I am a Pilates teacher. My primary focus is on core or your core. Um, what does that mean? In Pilates, we use the term powerhouse, and the powerhouse is essentially the core. So we hear this term all the time. It's being thrown around, use your core, you need to have a strong core, all of these things. But what, what really is the core? So today we're gonna look at our first question in, in this series will be, what is the core and how does it relate to you? My intention with these short videos is for you to be able to access them, maybe listen to them while you are walking to work or getting in your car and driving somewhere, um, walking to the subway if you live in a city, and really just setting your mind on your body for a short time because it starts with the thought. If you pay attention to your body through thinking and moving, then you're gonna have a better chance of really nurturing your body and getting yourself into the place you wanna get yourself physically and therefore emotionally and spiritually. Okay, so what is the core and how does it relate to you? So I remember when I was in high school, I was taking an aerobics class at Family Fitness Center. It's now called 24 Hour Fitness. I was in California and I was taking this class and I was a dancer, um, but, and I knew about posture and everything, but this teacher in this aerobics class kept saying, use your abdominals. I don't think she was using the word core at the time. I feel like that term has really just, uh, you know, become more of a, the go-to term in the past, I don't know, 15 years. But at the time, she was like, use your abdominal muscles. I did not really know what she meant, and as I was trying to do it, I was unable to sustain it. At that time, I had not experienced Pilates. I found Pilates a few years later, and I really had an in-depth study of the core. And finally, hey Jill, <laughs> Jill's here. Uh, finally, I um, started to understand that through a focused study, you could understand what this meant to have, um, to be able to access and use your core at the time she was saying ab muscles. So we, uh, so, so anyways, starting with this concept of how do you understand your core? And the first way to understand your core is to really study it. So to choose a practice, like Pilates or to choose a teacher who really understands how to teach you, a trainer that really understands the core, to really get that in-depth work. But what is the core comprised of? So we have several layers of abdominal muscles. We have our external rectus abdominal muscle, and that's, those are the muscles that are, uh, you see your six-pack abs. Um, Everybody wants a six pack, or we think we want a six pack, and those, they protrude a little bit, so we see them, and those are the most external muscles. And then we've got the obliques, which cross. They're like a, um, bands going, crossing down and connecting together, and crossing up and connecting together. And those help you twist your spine and condense in the center. Um, those are the second layer of abdominal muscles. But the primary abdominal muscle that we often miss and we often don't have access to with most clients that I work with, whether they are a professional athlete or they've just started Pilates, accessing this muscle is really challenging. And the ability, ability to access it and also sustain 
the access to it is extremely challenging. So this is called the transverse abdominis. And the transverse abdominis is your deepest layer of abdominal muscle. And it's what I consider the core of the core. The fibers run horizontally across your body. It's like a back brace connecting to your vertebra, coming around to the front of the body, connects up into your diaphragm, it connects to your hips, the bones of your pelvis. And when you engage that muscle, the waistline goes in, your spine is supported, your spine is lifted, and you have a stability in your torso that you didn't have before. So many of us have that belly hanging out, right? That sensation of the belly sort of protruding forward. Gravity does that. Um, especially as women, we tend to, as we get older, we have this pooch, but even younger women allow that tummy to sort of hang forward and butt stick out. That really compresses your spine and creates a lack of stability. So when we work the core and when we really engage and understand it and use it, then we create alignment and we create a strength that helps us with everything. When your core is tended to, when your core is alive, when your core is used and accessible, you feel safe in your body, you have more endurance to do the activities that you wanna do. Um, let's say you were a runner, or you are a runner, and you start to have Injuries. Having this strong core will help you endure in the things that you're doing. Um, when you have, hey Alice, long time. So Alice is a Alice is a Pilates client of mine. She understands all of this through physical study, um, which is the best way to understand it. Um, so going back to we're just talking about when you have a strong core and you're able to connect together to that, you feel safe, you're able to, um, your endurance for activities is uh, longer, more, uh, you have a greater capacity to do the things you want to do. Um, and you're essentially able to trust your body. So I came to Pilates, this deep study of the core, because I had back issues. Um, if you're in a state where your lower back gives out here and there, if you have pain in your back, if you have pain in your hips, your neck, your upper back, lower back, wherever it is, then chances are your core is not strengthened in the way that it could be um, and that is optimal. So I came to Pilates because of back issues and Pilates resolved my back problem completely. Before understanding my core and before being able to connect in the way I was able to connect, I was afraid of doing certain movements. So as a dancer, I was doing many, many, many um, strange movements. Dancers, of course, are asked to kick their legs up into the air, back bend, do all of these things that most people don't do on a regular basis. And Oftentimes, these activities would bring me pain. So I had a fear of being able to move fully. But after understanding the core, strengthening my core, and understanding how to use it, and to use it as a stabilizer and a sort of safety net, I was able to do things I hadn't been able to do for years. Um, I got a second life, if you will, in my body. And what happens when you study the core and when you're able to really delve in, um, and spend time with it, the same type of thing is gonna happen for you. So most people that I see who come in to um, study this end up being able to do things they didn't think they could do. So, the body is the greatest teacher, right? So, we, whatever's happening in our bodies is usually reverberating through our lives. Um, I like to look at core as a philosophy for my thinking and for my doing. So the more I'm connected to my physical core, the stronger I feel in my body, 
the more freedom I have, the more energy I have. And it's the same with the core of your life. So the questions I ask myself, if my core is out of whack physically, then I am in pain and I'm tired when I'm trying to take a soul cycle class, which I've started taking soul cycle classes again um, after having a baby nine months ago. Um, and if I don't have a strong core, I'm just exhausted. But when I pay attention to it, the energy comes. Um, similarly with your life. Your core is the core of who you are. It is the things that you value. The core in the body protects the vital organs, the things that run your life, that give you vitality. The core of your life are the things and the thoughts that protect your vital self. So staying close to core, paying attention to your values and decision making in moving forward is key. And as we do that in the body, we're able to do it in our lives. Many of my clients have made significant life, life changes outside of the Pilates studio um, after giving attention to this part of their body, after gaining strength and feeling this in their, in their center, in their physical being, they were able to make some moves that they weren't able to do before. So that's sort of our intro here, just a little bit of thinking about this. I wanna know, you know, how does the core relate to you? Do you think about it? Do you think about it when you are walking down the street? Do you think about your core when you are exercising? Is that something you think about? Do you understand what that means? Do you have the experience that I had, like I said earlier in the video, of someone saying to me, again in high school when I was in aerobics class, pull in your abdominals or use your, again, she didn't use the term core, but use those muscles. I didn't know what she meant. I sort of knew what she meant, but I was thinking that was sort of impossible. Do you have that relationship to your core? And does that affect your life at all? And are you making decisions based on the external, which is your limbs or the limbs of your life? Or are you making decisions based on the core of you? Um, one of the exercises I give to myself, this is a, a sort of thought spiritual exercise, is I'm in New York City where there's so much going on. We have a lot going on in our lives right now, a lot of things that draw our attention away from ourselves, from our core. Um, I will take with me, I'll imagine my center, which is right here, but my sort of spiritual center, and I'll bring the energy in not close it off, but just bring it close. And I'll try to create a little container for that energy as I'm moving throughout the city. And you have to slow that down a little bit. But if you can do it and you can keep the energy close to you, just like you would keep your core close to you and your body, you'll notice that it's easier to deal with the external. So that's one exercise I have for you today. But the other exercise I have for you, as I said, these talks are gonna be a little bit about body, a little bit about thought or spirit, and a little bit of movement. So we can take this next minute just to check in to your core. If you are walking somewhere, um, if you are sitting somewhere, uh, sitting is better, standing or sitting, stillness is key. So we're gonna take this moment or this minute to just check in. So I want you to be still wherever you are. If you're standing, that's fine. If you're sitting, that's fine. Uh, in the, I'm, gonna, I'm sitting, so we're gonna be here. I'm gonna ask you to just lift your spine and close your eyes. Take a few breaths and don't do anything to your body. Just let it be what it is right now.
And then I want you to focus a little bit on your navel. Again, don't do anything, just focus on it. And notice where it is. Does it feel like it's protruding? Does it feel like it's tense and held? Does it feel like you can sense it? Sometimes people don't have sensation in their abdomen region. And I want you to breathe a little bit into that navel. And then I want you to imagine a pair of pants that you have on, like a, a typical pair of pants with a button, a zipper, and we're gonna put a little elastic belt on the pants, okay? So the pants are on you right now, and what we're gonna do is right where that button is, and we're gonna say they're kinda high-waisted pants, so the button aligns right with your navel. We're gonna draw, we're gonna close off the button a bit. So we're gonna gather in that navel, that's your button, and then keep that little gathering in and try to breathe into your chest and exhale and then let that button go. So do that again, inhale and then exhale, gather that little button in, breathe into the chest, exhale, keep the navel back and release. And again, one more time, closing your eyes, gather the button in, breathe into the chest, exhale, and release. Now we're gonna add the zipper. So the zipper starts from your pubic bone and goes up to that button. So take your breath in and breathe out, draw the button back a bit, and then see if you can zip up those muscles from your pubic bone to your button, to your navel. Just see if you can sense that. Is this hard for you to do? Is this easy for you to do? Release. This is not about being able to do it. This is about asking yourself if you have access. We're gonna do it again. Navels in a little bit, and then zip pubic bone up to navel. Now, when you do that, you don't wanna move your pelvis you wanna to stay totally neutral, so you're not creating that sensation by doing something that's not it. We're just using the muscles here, release. One more, navel is in, zipper, pubic bone up to navel, and see if you can breathe in, using those muscles, exhale, release. And then final component, this waistline, this elastic, belt around the waist of this pair of pants. We're gonna take an inhale, exhale, navel back with your button, zip up from pubic bone all the way, hey Angie, up to your belly button, and then cinch that waistline in. So stay there with that cinch, hold, and release. Again, if you're just coming in, we're doing a little physical exercise to connect into our core. Closing your eyes, we're gonna take an inhale. On your exhale, we're drawing the navel back, which I'm calling the button of your pants. We're drawing the pubic bone up to the belly button, up to the navel, which is the zipper of your pants, and we're cinching in the belt around your pants. So see if you can connect all those places giving that some energy and release. We're gonna do it one more time and then you can always come back and do this again. The, the video will be living on my site. Take an inhale, exhale, draw the navel back. Zip up from pubic bone to navel. Cinch the waistline in, lengthen, hold on to that for a second and release. So this simple, simple exercise you can do while you are in your car, at a stoplight, period. You can do it if you're in the city riding on the subway. You can do it while you're watching TV. Hey Amy, nice to see you. It's been so long, that's cool. Good to see you here. Amy is a Pilates teacher, she's amazing. Um, 
So we're just, uh, Amy, I was just doing a little visualization, uh, connecting to the core, just getting into the basics. Um, but any time you take to pay attention to that is going to increment, incrementally help you establish that strength, use it when you're doing other things, um, and uh, just taking it into your life. So one of our core, philosophy, core philosophies in Pilates is that you really don't have to do much to get great benefit. Once you understand how to deeply connect, you can do three things in the morning, three exercises in the morning, and take that with you the rest of your day. So again, um, just coming back to our basic question here today, which is what is core and how does it relate to you? I encourage you to think about that over the next few days, over the next week. Just put it in your, you know, in your thought bucket. Um, paying attention to it is the way you're gonna open up to it. I know for me, it helps me to read a little bit about health, healthy diet, and that keeps me on track with eating, just if I read something for five minutes, just to keep me sort of focused. So same thing with your body, spend some time thinking about it. You can use these short videos to help yourself do that and practice that exercise this week. Um, and I will be back on Friday. On Friday, we are going to be talking about what state your core is in. How do we learn more about what state your core is actually in and how you can start to change and shift that if you want to. So everybody who watches these videos or shares them, I have a gift for you, which is a free 20 minute session. We have, I, we have an online Pilates and yoga coaching service, primarily Pilates. If this is something that you want to really understand, and as I said in the beginning of the video, in order to understand, truly understand the core, you really need some focused attention. Like I said, I was a dancer. I didn't really understand it until I studied it. Actually, Amy was my first Pilates teacher, which is insane. So she, she worked for my aunt who was, I guess you could say, Janice was my first Pilates teacher and Amy was her, worked for her and she gave me private lessons and it was incredible and that's where I learned about my core and I got out of back pain thanks to Amy. Um, and thanks to my aunt, of course. Uh, so, um, we, uh, as I was saying, if you want to take the opportunity to spend 20 minutes with a private instructor, I'm offering a free session um, with one of my instructors to give you that opportunity online, similar to being in person, just no hands on, but we give great vocal cues. So, anyways, have a great week, great day. I will see you on Friday if you're here. Um, and please share this with anybody you know who wants to think about these things and, and um, start to look at core more deeply. And I uh, wish you the best. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Info at mybodwellness.com or denise at mybodwellness.com. And have a great week.